right moving on now let's let's look at the current developments about which you may not find data in many textbooks okay this information is not normally available so please pay attention this is the present and the future i would say that the pneumatic instrumentation was uh past and it is going on in the present but very soon this is what you are going to see first of all tell me what is the problem what is the problem in using a pitostatic tube for speed measurement one answer is there can be blockages there can be leakages okay suppose i take care of blockages and leakages do you still have a problem in using a pitostatic tube what is the problem i'll give you a hint look at look at a high performance aircraft okay what could be the problem or let me ask you very specifically for which kind of aircraft this stat the pitostatic tube is not something that you would like to see anybody here yes in the next moment it may be in some other than right which causes the velocity to decrease suddenly right or increase suddenly so in that case the pitot system won't be able to uh, take into account the sudden change in the that's an assumption but it is not true that's not that's not true the pitostatic system is very very because it works on pressure and pressure gets conveyed immediately so there is no lag there is no lag yes what can happen is you are flying at a low speed and then you become supersonic and then subsonic the shock wave comes and goes but whatever happens the output is pressure and pressure is sensed beautifully by an instrument i am assuming an instrument is leak free and the instrument is block free okay if it is blocked or leaked then god help you okay yes anybody else ah there is one hand raised here do you also have a comment okay just a minute this is i uh, will go here so please take a mic and tell me what could be the problem my specific question is for which kind of aircraft is a pitostatic tube a serious problem hello yeah. yes so my name is dhanesh yes. actually in those aircraft which are uh, maneuvering too high so there will be a positional error means like if it is flying like this so there will be an air with different angle of attack in low speeds there could be a problem with no that. it doesn't matter sir because whatever the aircraft does the repercussion of that is only pressure and pressure is sensed very quickly almost instantaneously by a system so high maneuvering changing speeds changing altitude rate of climb etc is not a problem there is something more fundamental some other fundamental application where you cannot ex uh, accept this yes now we'll come to you yeah sir uh, it is requiring for uh, this uh, military aircraft like which are uh, which require the stealth properties like to reduce the rcs stealth property yeah, that is the thing see a pitostatic tube is a very small pointed device and it will give a very strong signature return so yes that is the answer so aircraft which are supposed to be stealthy they cannot they cannot be relied to use on this instrument because it will be a give away you spend hours of research and tons of money in making it with good low signature and then you find the canopy is reflecting or you the one pitot tube is reflecting and it is giving away the position so what kind of pitot tube static tube or what kind of speed measurement systems would you like to have on such aircraft ones which are flush which are not projecting out okay so you have something called as pitot plates pitot plates are very interesting they basically are plates which are attached to the side of the aircraft and as the air goes through them we try to find out the difference between the two sides of the the pressure on two sides of the plate okay so what you do is you direct a plate direct air through a plate which has a hole inside okay and now you measure the amount of air constricted by the obstruction so this is used in aircraft like these this aircraft is the raptor f22 and stealth bomber b2 i have not shown because you can't see it okay 
so it is supposed to be really stealthy. So it is used in these two aircraft. The question is how do they work okay and the answer is not expected right now. Let us study this and answer. This is something new. Information about this is not easily available. A simple Google search on pitot plates will not show anything except pitostatic tubes because Google will think you have made a wrong entry. Okay. So, this is a very interesting topic. I would like you to spend some time searching material for pitot plates and put it up on models. Okay. Moving on to the latest things. Have you heard of radar? There is something called a lidar also in which you replace radio with light. Okay. So, light detection and right. So, here we use light for ranging and detection and a very interesting concept called as Nestle. Nestle is new standby lidar instrument experiment. It was carried out and then once it was successful there was another project called as Daniela demonstration of anemometry instrument based on laser. Now, no pressure only laser or lidar is used. Okay. So, let us see let us see what this is and how it works. So, first I want to show you how good it is. So, here you see a line which is inclined at almost 45 degrees and the dots there indicate on the x axis you have the true air speed which is altitude data and the true air speed which is measured by this this Nestle experiment. You can notice they are perfectly aligned on the 45 degree line which means there is an error between the two but very very marginal. In fact, if you want to be more specific there is another figure which shows uh, the error. So, on top there are actually two lines we see only one line but there are two lines superimposed over each other they are so perfectly matching that it looks like only one line and that is a comparison of the true air speed recorded by this Nestle experiment and the actual actual by pitostatic instrumentation. On the bottom you have this uh, error difference in knots and the difference is only between between plus minus so plus 2 and minus 3 or let us say 4 in some cases. So, difference is only between plus minus 4 knots and the speeds are 200 knots, 250 knots, 150 knots. So, in 150 knots the error is only about plus minus 4 knots. So, that is the beauty. Let us see what this is. I have a nice video which explains, explains this particular uh, experiment. So, this is from NLR in Holland. the aircraft that was used for the experiment. This red block is the LIDAR block. The airport is Schiphol in Amsterdam. These are the optical heads which are measuring the speed using the LIDAR. They tested the system in clouds, in bad weather, rain, in disturbed wind. So, notice the partners basically this is a, a project under FP6 ok. Now, FP7 has also been announced. You can see all of all the big names in aerospace instrumentation 
as well as in aerospace engineering they are all there uh, who are partners in this project it's a research project therefore the implementation of this has not yet taken place in aircraft this is a futuristic project where the aim is to remove the usage of pressure instruments on aircraft so i just took some time to read the report okay so this is the photo of the executive summary important thing is that this airspeed system was successfully integrated in the research aircraft okay there were 46 flights about 100 hours of flying and what is the result the system can be operated in normal and extreme conditions clear air big rain droplets and dust particles okay and there are no show stoppers that means they don't think anything can go wrong there is no obvious uh, error or obvious problem in this particular system okay so this is the shape of things to come for the future 